Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Diego and uh, today I'm going to be sharing a short video on my journey to med school. So, I'm currently, it very much still is a journey. I'm currently in the process of applying, so I'm going to apply in September. But the purpose of this video really is, I mean, we're a week, for, for those that know, um, we're a week away from the GAMSA exam. So I'm, at, I'm going to sit it in March on the 23rd. And I just wanted to provide, we'll just give some, like, a short, short update of how my, how I found it, my, like, preparation for it. And through this, hopefully also give you some tips where, um, where you can, you know, improve your preparation. I mean, we're a week, we're a week out, so there's not much, there's not much room for actual, for massive improvements. <clears throat> So I'm a bit ill, but um, so that's why my voice my voice is a bit croaky. Um, but yeah, so I initially I wasn't gonna I wasn't gonna do the GAMSAT exam this um, March. I was gonna do it in September, but then I realised that you're able to do it twice in one cycle, and I figured it was gonna be way more beneficial to to do the exam. Um, I've heard a lot of people say that it's not good to have an approach with the with the first attempt. Um, as a practice right because you know you're spending money and you don't want to go in with that attitude so even though you know in my mind i see the benefit of taking a practice exam because it is in my mind a practice not because i have to put in the work i've been revising like really hard but you know with an exam like this you really do need to see where you are the mock exams you know you can do them under exam conditions but it's never going to be the same as actually being there on the day um, so what I would say maybe a first tip from that would be, you know, personally, if you have the means to do it, apply for, to do the, the one in March and, you know, in the back of your mind, have it as an, as a practice where you get an experience out of it, but that doesn't mean that you should not prepare as if it was your final, your, your you know, your first attempt where maybe you could get in. So for me, even though, so like I said, I wasn't going to do it and um it wasn't until january that i realized that I, you know i should do it and i wanted to do it but you know another issue as well that you find with the gamsa exam is that there's no um there's no books like there's not an actual official acer book that you can purchase and you can say okay i'm confident that this is what's going to teach me what i need and so this creates space for a lot of misinformation and a lot of companies selling books which claim to be the number one book and stuff so i mean my what i would say is that i spent like two weeks buying searching for a book i bought a book i bought like three books which were okay right so these were the gold standard books they were okay um and i think they were probably more beneficial for the reasoning for the section one more than the section three um i think it's common knowledge that this exam is very much a problem solving exam so as much as having the knowledge is important um, so for those that don't know I actually I've got a biological sciences degree um, and now I'm doing a master's degree so <clears throat> in health policy so my first degree helps me with the science right and maybe a book like the gold standard would be good for someone who has no science background but even so I still feel like as much as the the, what you call it as much as the science is important I also feel that the the practice is important you know you they have to have a specific technique to attempt the exam and to approach it and so that's something that I realized you know when I bought the books I was very excited um, and I'm talking about the gold standard books but then as the weeks progressed I realized that they weren't speci speci specifically the science bit wasn't going to prepare me for what I needed for section 3 you know, for section three, you need to work on your graph interpretation skills. You need to work, you do need to build up the knowledge for science, biology, for, sorry, for chemistry, biology, and physics. And you need to work a lot on your math skills. I'm not talking about extremely complex uh, mathematical skills, but you know, the basic stuff, knowing how to divide long, num uh, lo knowing how to do long division, knowing how to, uh, you know, divide, subtract, add, multiply, fractions, stuff like that you need to be confident with that because although you know the fact that 
you're not going to need a calculator, you're not allowed to take a calculator, doesn't mean it's because there's not going to be any maths coming up. And the physics one, the physics questions tend to be, um, you know, best questions, you know, they're not going to, there is an element of knowing the physics, but once you know it, now you need to know how to apply it. And you're going to, if you don't know how to divide or multiply or, you know, or add, uh, you know, ten, uh, fractions, the decimals, <coughs> then, you know, you will find yourself, you know, doing the whole question, understanding how to do it, but not knowing what the answer is. So that's, that would be a tip, you know, work on key core skills, which you think are, which are fundamental really to approaching any exam, you know, your mathematical skills, your reading skills, your ability to discern what is important in the text. Now, I give these tips not as not because I proclaim to be an expert. Um, I'm just giving these tips on what I've seen through this whole. So I prepared. Um, I started preparing mid mid January. So I've I've had about two months or so um, preparation. Um, so I, the thing is that because I work full time and I'm also doing a part time course at uni, it really cuts down my days. Like it really has an effect. And that's something that I've been trying to, to I've been struggling with because, you know, I, I know, so for example, I've worked on the science, I've worked on the biology, um, I've worked on the physics. I feel like if I had another month, another extra month, I would have been able to really, really, um, you know, refine my physics skills where, for example, 20%, I think, of the whole paper are physics questions. Well, let's say out those, of those that twenty. Let's say out of the um, out of the those twenty-two questions, right? That I get from from section three, maybe I can get ten right, fifteen right. You know that makes a massive difference. Um, so although I've been practicing, I still feel like I needed a bit more time. And likewise for section two, more than section one. For section one, I feel confident because I've done quite a lot of reading. I've you know my reading is quite good. And uh, I've done pretty well on the mocks for it. Um, but section two, honestly, um, I haven't prepared that much for it. And that was mainly because I, you know, you, you, you give a lot of bearing and a lot of importance to section three and somewhat to section one. Um, for section two, though, what I will say is that you can get a review called the Des O'Neill's review. And um, they've got like a section two um what do you call it it's sort of like a, it's like a workbook basically and um, I'm not sure if they're still in circulation but a friend of mine gave it to me and um, it basically goes through it you've got like nine tasks for each for task A task B to do for section two and you work through it so I've started working through that and I'm going to actually work on that today as or well, later today but that would be something where I can see where the extra weeks of preparation can really help. Because as much as you want to improve and you want to do well in section three, you know, doing well in section two and doing really well can really, really help you. And so, you know, this last week, there's not much that I can really do in terms of learning new content. And I'm really not going to attempt that. There might be a, a few small things, but mainly it's about for me, memorizing the notes that I already have. So it's not, it's not a lot of notes, it's memorizing some notes, um, some topics, which I'm also gonna give uh, later on a small uh, tutorial, maybe in the coming weeks of how I do my notes and how I revise. Um, but anyway, what I wanna say is that this last week, uh, my approach, and I'm not sure if maybe you concur or you like to follow this, you know, see if it works best for you. My approach really now is to uh, do to revise, like memorize my actual content, the content I've, I've stacked up over these these this last month and a half, last two months, sorry. And from then on, you know, when I mean memorize, I mean just like spend like two hours at the end of the day going over notes that you have, right, and relevant notes. And um, but then during the day, actually do the mocks, actually do the mocks in a time condition uh, under exam conditions because you know the knowledge unfortunately either, either you have it or you don't 
right? And there's not much more you can do than prepare for. Maybe if you want to revise or learn new content, learn some content which may be, you know, maybe two or three topics which aren't that that extensive, right? But that you know you have a bit of a gap there. Because what you don't want to do is in the last week spend a lot of time learning new content where you haven't had time to revise for your old content and you want to really spend this time from my opinion and from what I've seen the, the real benefit comes from actually doing the test and preparing and actually doing the mock so that's what I'm going to be doing this last week um, well we've got just about a week two days or something like that but, um, but yeah that's what I'm going to be doing I feel like for exam material you know as much as a gold standard book is okay like i said it's not terrible but i feel like with a good a level book for chemistry and biology and physics especially for physics it can help you a lot and you know the des o'neill books are really good um what else did i use for chemistry and biology i, I mean for chemistry i use a lot of Khan academy um yeah i mean it really Personally, I never, I never, look, when I was revising for chemistry and biology, not once did I go back to my university lectures from my first degree. And I'd probably say that it was really rare that I went back to the gold standard books. And it was just because, honestly, when I went through it, I just didn't feel like they didn't give me the confidence as that they were going to give me what I needed to learn the content. If anything, it sort of, I found it actually more hard to understand the concepts they were explaining. Um, whereas with the online videos, you know, maybe they simplify it a bit. So another thing I would say is learn the content, you know, from the Khan Academy and stuff like that, where it, it's a bit easier for you to digest the content, right? But does, don't leave it there. Well, now, once you've got this, now go and try and apply it to questions on the topic to see, um, to see if you really understand it. You know, so what I would do is I'd, I'd do learn the content on a, you know on like Khan Academy or videos like that where it was where I where I saw it was um, easier for me to digest. But what I would do after is then go and try attempt these questions with the knowledge I now had, and try and do A level questions, try the university level questions, and you know honestly for me I worked it worked. Another thing that I would say is, it might be a bit too late for you to do this now, but maybe for the next attempt you know hopefully i mean i'm estimating that i probably won't get 62 63 64 65 um and i think mainly that comes down to because of my i haven't been able to give much um how can i say much preparation to section two i think section two section one you can do really well if you prepare for them really well and section three i'm confident i've done well in it in my mocks but section two i feel like it's really important so definitely something that I'm going to bear in mind for September um, you know maybe I won't, I won't need to do it and maybe you won't need to do it if you're sitting in March but you know it's always good to to prepare so for example something that I would do I set up a progress tracker on Excel and I'll probably do a video on this later on but just so you have an idea what I'll do is on this progress tracker I'll monitor my, my performance for, for each um, mock exam that I would do for each section for section 1, section 2, section 3 and you could see you know I started to see like an increase in I feel like initially I got like 33 in the first section then it went up to like 50 and it sort of stayed around there 55, 60 um, so so yeah I think a progress track is important I think it's important as well to also account for the fact that you may just be learning <laughs> the the paper so you don't want to do that so um so yeah so have a progress tracker if you see you know you're getting 90 out of 110 as much as it may be you're improving in your, in your learning content it could also be that you're memorizing the paper right you're starting to get familiar with the paper so spread it out a bit mix the papers you know so do one paper one day take two days do another so you don't so you're not counting on your memory to do it um, I think that's about it. I just wanted to make a short video. You're going to realize the, the format of this video is a bit different to the ones I've done previously. And it's just because, really, I just wanted to share something really quick. It's now 15 minutes, but I just wanted to share something really quick um, on my 
and my experience and some tips that I can give you guys. I hope the exam goes really well and I'm sure that, you know, if you've prepared, it will go well. And if not, really take this as a learning experience. You know, really, really, when you're sitting there, go in with the mindset that you're going to pass and you're going to do your best. But when you come out, take it as a learning curve. And also, I would also advise, you know, maybe take a few days off after your exam. But don't leave your preparation to one side. You know, um, for me, I find it a bit hard because I've got my dissertation to hand in September and I'm also going to sit the UCAT in June or July, I think it is, July. And I've also got some assignments to, to submit in May. So really, because I haven't got that much time to available, I feel like I can't afford to, and I've, maybe you're in the same position, I can't afford to I'll just lay back and say, you know what, this is it, I've done the exam. Now let me wait till May and then see if I need to. You know, in the meantime, carry on doing a bit of past papers on, the, on your weekend, read through your notes. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be preparing for section two. So, uh, sorry about that. Unfortunately, someone came in and uh, I had to cut the video. Anyway, so what I'm saying is that, let me see if I can remember what I was saying. Um, yeah, so... What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be preparing for section two, so writing essays weekly up until maybe not September because that would be a bit tiring, but maybe up until May or yeah, May, June, so I can have an idea of of where I am. But then I think by then, you know, you would have already, um, you would have already been able, you know, you, you would have strengthened your skills to a reasonable level, you know, in two or three months writing every week. We get really good. And I feel like that's where I want to be with that. I feel like extra 10 points, extra 15 can make a massive difference. And um, so that would, those, that would be my advice. This video has been a bit longer than I expected. I didn't realize I had this much to say about the GAMSAT. I can say it's definitely been a stressful experience. Um, and again, I think it's because, you know, there's a lot about it. There's a lot said about it. There's just horror stories going out there. And there's nowhere really to go, you know, in terms of what books do you buy? You know, what do I actually use as material? When you go on Amazon, it's like £200 for a whole, like, package of books, like a pack, a pack of books. So what I would say is, you know, first find syllabus, GradMed, GradMed's website, they've got a syllabus for each topic. And um, you also find patterns in the mock papers, you'll find patterns of what topics come up. Um... And yeah, and from there, really go on and, and start to start to create a table of each topic under biology, chemistry and physics. For section three, I'm talking about section three specifically. Go for each topic, you know, highlight it that you've done it, write notes in it, store them on your computer on an Excel sheet. And, um, and I, I do mean an Excel sheet, I'm not just confused. <laughs> yeah, an actual Excel sheet, not words, right? I'll make a video on why I think this is good. There's a lot of videos going out about this so so yeah you can also check this up um but what i was saying is that yeah so look up kind academy youtube um find the syllabus first go go over that then buy maybe some a level books see if you can attempt the questions after you do a topic see if you can attempt the questions on the actual mock paper and you'll find that you're gonna get better bit by bit you know I feel like with this, what I've realized is that it really is, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon and you have to take your time, you have to be patient. And um, and yeah, I mean, if you're sitting in the camps that you're applying to get into medicine. So the way I see it now, um, now that I've, I'm working, I've done a master's course and I'm applying as a graduate uh, applicant, um, I realise that as much as I want to get into medicine this year and I want to apply sorry in September, I'm also viewing it, you know, I view it as a career, essentially. Um, not because I just view it as a way to get money, but because I view it, that allows me to become patient, you know. In outside, in business, in whatever, I work as I work in, in R&D as a business consultant. And I won't, I'm also going to make a video on that, you know, for pathways into, into certain areas and how to manage your time when you're working full-time and studying part-time. What I've realized is that, you know, you don't really, um, 
when you know, as because I've started to understand that medicine, as much as it is my passion, it's also going to be my career. It's allowed me to take a step back and be a bit more patient with my approach. You know, when you go out and work, for you to get promoted to a senior level, you know, it will take years. And this is the way I'm seeing it. You know, for me, a senior level right now would be to become a doctor. And right now, I'm preparing myself to do that. And chances are you're also doing that. So, you know, make the most out of this experience next week for the exam. But, you know, be patient and be, how can I say, you know, take it easy and just understand that this is, you're going to get in. You know, if you've applied, you've put your work in, you're going to get in. So don't be disheartened if you don't get in first time. Um, chances are you will, right? Chances are you will. Put in the work. If you prepare yourself, you will. And let's just hope that everything will go well. Um, if you've got any more questions, uh, just leave them in the comment section. Please like this video and also subscribe. Uh, I've got, I've, I know that I've had some stints where I haven't been sharing some videos, but again, it's been really hard like, to produce content. But now, I thought I'd do it and I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe, please, share, like and comment. Thank you.